If you finished Bloodborne single player experience multiple times and you're looking to get more out of the game, well, you have come to the right place. Bloodborne offers multiplayer co-op and competitive PvP for the people who are seeking more out of the game. In this video, I will tell you everything you need to know about Bloodborne's PvP in order to get ready for facing any opponent online. And this is targeted to both veterans and beginners. So, without further ado, let's begin. Number 10. Making a build. Having your own unique playstyle is essential in PvP. That's why your stats should reflect who you are and what you are capable of in PvP. There are passive slash defense stats and then there is your primary damage stats. Your passive stats are vitality and endurance and your damage stats are strength, skill, blood tinge and arcane. In order to make a build, you have to pick and choose between the damage stats. You cannot have all of them at a high level. And that's because the PvP community, they all fight at the same range. And that's between level 100 and 150. And as for your defensive stats, vitality should be at a very high level. It should be at least between 45 and 50. And when it comes to endurance, and that of course determines how many attacks you can do in a row, I always advise no less than 20. And you don't need more than 30 in my personal opinion, however, you can go higher than that. So after determining your defensive stats, we are left with the damage stats and that is the point where your character gets unique. You are left with 4 damage stats which are strength, skill, blood tinge and arcane. When aiming for a level between 100 and 150, you can only specialize in one or two of these stats. So you don't have enough souls or sorry, blood echoes to pour on your other as on your other stats. If you want to be a skill build, you should go with 50 skill so you can maximize your damage with skill weapons. So that's that's it for builds as for now, let's move on to the next entry. Number 9. Picking your weapon. Your best friend in Bloodborne. The weapons you'll be playing will determine your damage stats or reflect your damage stats. So for example, Ludwig's Holy Blade has B scaling in both strength and skill, which means the higher strength and skill you have, the more damage you can dish out. Your damage stats do have hard caps, which means at a certain threshold, you will gain less damage per point. The hard cap is 50 at most stats, however, arcane is kind of different as hunter tools do scale more than af uh, they do scale after 50. So if you want to have maximum damage output with your Ludwig's Holy Blade, then having 50 in both strength and skill is the most effective. Another example of a weapon is the Chikage. The Chikage is skill plus blood tinge weapon. So you should level up these stats in order to use it at its full potential. Number 8. Picking your runes. Runes enhance some of the stats you have which makes them very important part in Bloodborne. And if you ever played the Dark Souls series, they are the equivalent of rings in there. However, some runes are essential and 99% of my builds I do use the same runes. These are the HP up runes and the stamina up runes. These amplify your defensive stats and they are almost mandatory in PvP. You will need 2 HP runes and 1 stamina rune. You get the 10% HP rune from Nightmare of Frontier while the 15% HP rune can be found in the Chalice Dungeons. Use this glyph to find the HP rune one from the Chalice Dungeons. The 20% rune can be found also in the dungeons. Here's the glyph too. Before you get that, you can get the one from Lecture Hall by talking to the Spider Guy patches. It's a 10% stamina rune. Use that one until you know you get the one in the dungeons. Having two runes, HP runes, is essential, essential in, P in Bloodborne. Since you receive a ton, a ton, and I repeat, a ton of damage so so stacking these two runes increase your survivability drastically especially when you have 50 vitality number seven 
Equip good blood gems. Using blood gems makes you a proficient killer, and since everybody in PvP uses them, you should too. The easiest way to get good ones is either either farming them in Nightmare of Menses by killing the Winter Lanterns, or ki killing the Winter Lanterns in the DLC right before the last boss. Since every weapon has three slots for blood gems, you will need to farm three of those gems, and remember, some of them drop with negative attributes such as HP down or attack down and you should avoid those at all costs since, since all of them drop a negative attribute, hence the name, Curse Blood Gem, the ac acceptable negative attribute are as follows, stamina cost up, weapon durability down, damage versus beast and kin down. I personally go with the beast or kin down unless I am fighting a beast or kin boss. There are still better gems out there in the dungeons but need more effort to obtain them on your part. Check this video in annotation or down in the description that I made way back uh, explaining how to get these ultimate gems however after the DLC patch they made it much easier to obtain so it'll be much easier than I'll be describing in that video Number 6. Picking your gun. A gun will be on your left hand most of the times you'll be playing Bloodborne. Your finger on the trigger, ready to hunt all matter of beasts, but neglecting it is not a wise idea. Guns do have the ability to do chip damage to your foes from the luxury of range. Plus, you can parry your opponent if you shoot at the right moment. Your blood tinge stat is what your guns are dependent on. The more blood tinge you have, the more the guns will do damage, or sorry, inflict damage. But some guns do benefit from that stat more than the others. Some weapons are also tied with the blood tinge stat, I mean main weapons, such as, you know, the Simon's Bow Blade, Chikage, and the Blood Letter. So if you want a blood tinge build, you have those to complement your build. And going back to guns, guns do have different roles and you have to use them, you know, according to the role you want. You know, they have different ranges, different damages and different stun lock capabilities. So choose wisely, my fellow hunter, as your gun will be one of your best friends in the heat of battle. Number 5. How to find matches. So we talked a lot about builds and stats, so let's start by talking about finding PvP matches in Bloodborne. First, you need to buy the Sinister Bell from the Inside Shop. Buying this item means nothing if you don't know the online rules, so let me lay it out for you. If a person rings a Sinister Bell, or the Beckney Bell, the one you know that gets co-op players, in an area where the boss is still alive, a bell ringing woman will appear. This triggers the time where you can be invaded. People now can enter your world and uh, your world, and this mechanic is designed for two purses, uh, purposes. It punishes people who are summoning people for help, or it finds other people that are ringing the sinister bell too, so you can connect to fellow hunters who are looking for a fight. Now, if you ring the bell in an area where the boss is dead, you can only invade others. You yourself cannot be invaded and can't even summon other people for help. So, to maximize exposure online, keep your boss alive in an area that you intend to invade. Optional bosses are perfect since they don't need to be killed in order to progress the storyline in Bloodborne. So to, cut it, so to cut it short, if the boss is alive, you can invade or, or be invaded. If the boss is dead, you can only invade other people. You can duel also with friends by having one person equipping the Vile Blood Covenant and the other equipping the Executioner Covenant and then having one ring the Beckoning Bell and the other the Small Beckoning Bell and you will connect together as enemies. To fasten this process, just make sure to put a password, you and the person you were trying to connect with, and you will connect very fast. Number four, choosing the area. The area you choose to play in Bloodborne determines the type of fights you'll find. Looking for other people who want to fight too means you should go to any of, those de on any of these dedicated PvP areas. Nightmare Frontier, Nightmare of Menses and Hunter's Nightmare. Nightmare Frontier and Nightmare of Menses are unique in that the bell ringing woman would appear regardless if the player is ringing any bells or not. 
this increases the chances for connecting to other players. Although you don't get an automatic bell ringing woman in a hunter's nightmare, which is the first lap in the DLC by the way, I do find the most matches there, since there is an optional boss there, and of course it is the DLC, which is the latest addition to the game, thus having high traffic, which is what you're gonna be looking for exactly. Other, area co other areas consist mainly of co-opers, so expect to fight more than one opponent. Don't get me wrong though, those aren't defined rules, but these are the, the most probabilities you'll get while playing. You might fight duelists in PvE, PvE areas for all I know, or vice versa. All in all, know which area you're going to, you know, use or invade, and learn your way around there to use the power of the environment if you were facing multiple opponents and you were against all odds. And don't forget that enemies won't attack you when you're an invader, so use them wisely when you're fighting multiple opponents. Number 3. Visceral Attacks Visceral attacks are critical hits you score when you parry your opponent. It can be triggered by either shooting somebody right before they attack with their weapon or shooting them while they're, while they're trying to heal. They are extremely powerful and can be a game ender if you or your opponent scores one. Although the game gives you the power to attack a million times with different combos and techniques and give you powerful weapons, none of this matters when you get shot and parried, as most people will one shot you after that. And yes, I repeat, they will one shot you after that. You can press R1 easily, but if you press it at the wrong time, it will be your end. So you really have to tread carefully when you attack your opponents. Visceral attacks get stronger, by the way, the more skill you have. So if you have, let's say, an arcane plus strength build and you have no skill, your visceral, da your visceral attacks will absolutely do crap damage. Having high HP does minimize you getting one shot, so my point here will be is be careful when you attack or heal, but at the same time, be opportunistic when you can get a visceral attack your f yourself, such as shooting somebody who was R1 spamming or somebody who is trying to heal. Another important thing to note is that invaders and co-opers have 30% less HP than the host. So please, beware, when you're an invader, you don't want to be parried and reposted. Number two, there are no rules. There are no enforced rules in PvP. You can be a troll, dick, spammer, noob, professional, coward, honorable, or anything else for that matter, and nobody will be able to stop you. That's actually one of the beauty of the game, but is always preferred if you are nice and, you know, just doing the objective. But in the end of the day, this is a subjective matter. You can choose to heal or not to heal during fights, but most duelists expect you not to heal. My personal advice is to react to what your opponent is doing and just go with the flow, bruh. Say some in the community also do dungeons that are, you know, dedicated to PvP. So there is a lot of ways to approach the game. And one of the reasons, and uh, by the way, this is one of the reasons why Bloodborne is not competitive, as there is no arenas, no tournaments, or even leaderboard. So it's just there for enjoyment. And you should enjoy the game as you see fit. And one hint just before I leave, one hint, or sorry, before I finish my point on this subject, just one hint uh, when you're fighting people, in order to spot a, a duelist, your opponent usually will damage this damage themselves by restocking bullets and not healing. So they can have HP closer to that to an invader's. Because remember, an invader does have 30% less HP than the host. To conclude here, the game was designed as PvE first and PvP second, so feel free to play PvP in your own way, either it be killing people on their way to the boss, or by laying traps and ambushes, or by being friendly, or whatever the hell you want. But if you ain't enjoying it, this game is just not for you, I guess.
Number one, stay positive. As staying positive is everything in Bloodborne. The game can be a bit frustrating when you first get into PvP. You will get one shot, you will die quickly, you won't know how to counter certain techniques and, and, uh, and certain aspects of the game, but with time you will get better. So when you're playing, just aim to try to get better, learning from your opponents, learning from your mistakes, observe your opponent, see what weapon they're using. You can deduce a lot from that, you can know what to expect from them, what attacks they have, what what kind of arsenal they have what kind of build also so if you see somebody using the chikake two-handed you know that they have a blood tinge build for example so just stay positive uh, this community is great i love the community people can be very friendly they will always send you gg after you know they beat you or you beat them but of course there will always be a few battle a few bad apples here and there you know the toxic part of the community but my my point here is really the game is amazing is magnificent i really love it there's a lot of ways to play it although it's not as in-depth as dark souls which is you know a bit on a negative side like there's not a lot of tactics you know you can you know put in your gameplay like in dark souls but it is it's still you can still learn a lot you can use your environment i just i love the game i really want others to do uh, to do so so yeah stay positive guys and of having positive energy is everything, really. So guys, this is the end of this video. I've put a lot of effort into it. I really did this video just to get more people in the community. I really love this game and I think it's a bit inaccessible to most average players. I hope this video cleared it up for you. And if it did, please don't forget to like and subscribe as that is the only way to support the channel and, and it keeps me making videos. And as you know, Dark Souls 3 is just around the corner. It's coming in April, 12th of April, and I'll be covering that extensively. And it's a bit it's sad that we only have three months for of Bloodborne, but Dark Souls 3 is coming. How can we not be excited for that? So that's the end, guys. I'll see you on my next video. Peace.